All right, guys, welcome back to another video. So this will be the getting started video. We'll go over setting up the AI controller and all of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, talk about the animations uh, and what I did with them and why. And so under the characters, mannequins, animations, Manny and matrix bench, you'll see three animations here. I may add the enter left and enter right later uh, to this project and for those who were following who are currently following along uh, I'll have whenever we get around to those I'll have them in a zip file separately and I will walk you through importing them so anyway so I, I turned these into proper root motion animations. And the reason why was because I'm not real sure what they were trying to do. I don't know if the animations were just, uh, if maybe the animator uh, had a misunderstanding and sent them over like they were, or if they were actually planning on doing it in a very specific way. But the only, so the root is right under the pelvis. That's normally where it is in a root motion animation. But their root was way over here where they were going to go sit down at. And so the body starts off like several hundred centimeters away from the root. And what that does is whenever you go to blend and play that as a root motion animation on a montage, uh, the character, wherever the character is, they'll, they'll slide back into position because of the root motion, the root will be right here and the body will be right here. But on that animation, the root will be underneath the pelvis. Uh, and so that's the reason why uh, I chose to make this a proper root motion animation because if I would have used it that way, then we would have had to teleport uh, the player. As soon as the player got to a specific point, we would have to teleport the player uh, to the actual bench and then play the animation and then it would uh, snap back and I'm not sure that we would be able to do that fast enough without some funky uh, blending uh, going on and it would have been more difficult to manage an animation like that an animation setup like that so I chose not to go that route so I thought I would go ahead and give you guys a rundown on that so the first thing we're going to do is go into the bench, enter C, and I did not set these up for you guys because I want you to become familiar with how to work with these kinds of animations. So this is a root motion animation, as you'll see, the root is, is walking, uh, moving along with the character. And so that red you see there is showing the offset the root is from the origin. That means it's a root motion animation. So we'll enable root motion and you'll see he's no longer moving, which is normal whenever you enable root motion. It also does the same thing if you force uh, the root to lock. And whenever you do this, if the root motion animation was set up properly, then uh, the character shouldn't be doing funky stuff like turning side to side and some weird stuff like that. Uh, what I mean is is wobbling this way and that way along this axis, axes. Uh, so anyway, so if you enable the anim, the animation uh, animation locomotion library, then you should have all these uh, curve modify. I mean these animation modifiers, and if and this is actually under the animation data modifiers. If you don't see that tab, go up to the window and go to animation data modifiers and you should be able to pull it up. Yours are probably going to be tabbed up here at the top. I docked mine on the side, just a personal preference. It's kind of janky, uh, but I like it because it allows me to quickly clear stuff out and have a bigger viewport. So it's just a personal preference. You don't guys, you don't have to do that. Anyway, so under add modifiers, zero out root. Oh, no, that's the wrong one, my bad. I want to remove that. Add the sync marker and a modifier. We don't have to do anything. We just need to apply it. 
unless you're using a custom character with different boning, uh, bone names, then you'll have to uh, specify uh, the foot bone names right here and the root name. So whenever you're doing this on animations of this nature, it's common that you'll get false positives. And the reason why is because these markers are being placed whenever these bones pass a certain uh, point uh, in relation to the root. And whenever that happens, it'll, pat, it'll place one of these markers. And sometimes whenever you're sitting down and stuff like that, you'll get these false positives. As you'll see here, the feet are not moving. Uh, he's not walking, so we need to remove those. So we're gonna remove those false positives. You should only have two here. And then on the bench exit, we're basically doing the same thing, enabling root motion animation. And we're adding that sync marker, adding those sync markers. Again, we'll get some false positives like right here. This is a false positive. And that's an annoying bug. I, no, that one's not a false positive. These other ones are though, so just keep those last two. Now we're gonna do the bench loop. So we're gonna set this to be looping. If you don't have this set to loop and it's supposed to be a looping animation, if you drag it onto the anim graph, then you'll have to manually uh, enable looping on the anim, anim sequence from the anim graph. Uh, if you set loop right here uh, as the default, then when you drag it onto the anim graph, it'll automatically be set to loop on the anim graph. So I like to do that regardless if I'm going to be using it on the anim graph or not. In this case, we're not. We're going to be running these as animation montages. So you can right click and create an anim montage for these. And there we go. Now, Normally, if, if you have a specific slot you want this to play on, you would go to slot, slot name, and change to the slot. There's some default ones already set up on the mannequin here. Uh, I didn't add those. Okay, so you see this right here. We have 525,000 frames. That's some kind of bug. I don't know what's causing that. Uh, that's They fixed it in 5.4, I believe. Uh, but if you're concerned that might cause a problem, then you can manually create an anim montage and create uh, select the skeleton. And then I will call this AM bench enter C. And this is kind of janky how we have to do this. I hate that click and drag thing. Um, but uh, the alternative is you can actually go to the animation asset and click and drag it like that. Um, that's actually not a bad idea. But if you do it this way, you'll see that it we don't have that problem. So we're going to set up sync groups. Uh, I don't actually think that sync groups uh, are going to work between anim sequences on an anim graph and an anim montage. I have no way of confirming that. There is the ability right here to set up sync markers, uh, but I don't know um, if it'll actually sync these with the locomotion animations. I don't think it does. I don't think it helps. So we'll go ahead and create, um, let's see. We're gonna go ahead and where is my, okay. This is weird. I'm supposed to have a timeline on here. Am I missing something?
what's going on here? This is really weird. What am I missing? I'm missing something. Let me exit out of that and reopen it. Yeah, there it is. What? That was so weird. Okay, I guess you can just go to track and add notify. I'm I'm so used to there automatically being a track here. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, anyway, we're going to go to add notify state and we're going to add a motion warping and just click and drag that out. We'll have to likely adjust to this uh, later, but we'll just make it 30 frames long for now. And over here under the details, this should be set to skew warp. We're going to uh, set the warp uh, target to, I'm sorry, uh, let me get that out of the way so you can see me typing. The warp target name should be bench. Everything else can be default. So in case you don't know warp rotation timing, if you set this to two, we have this at, thir at 30 frames long right now. That means if you set this to two, it will warp the rotation across 60 frames. If you set this to 0.5, it'll warp it across 15 frames. Uh, so just uh, let, let it be known. And that's from the start, not from the end. So that's from the start and out. So we're not going to actually mess with the blend in time right now. We can uh, mess with that later. But the blend profile in, we're going to set that to fast feet. That seems to work okay. And in actuality on mine, I think I actually did set mine up almost exactly like this one without even realizing this was a default on the uh, mannequin. I'll have to go back and look to be sure that's how I set mine up. But basically, under your character, you'll see if you go to this gear icon under the skeletal tree, you have these blend profiles. So we have blend profiles and then we have blend masks. Most people are only familiar with blend masks and this is what they use to divide, uh, like play an animation on the upper body and then one on the lower body. But then we also have these add time uh, or these time blends and these weight blend profiles. And what these allow us to do is weights allow you to determine uh, how much of this bone on this animation uh, animation will be played uh, basically and then uh, the time blend profiles allows you to adjust the timing to make it faster or slower for that specific bone um, and so if you slow if you slow this down on the feet you can actually get a uh, better blends and so that's the reason why we're using the fast feet uh, blend profile which is a timing profile so that's the rundown on that um, you could try to use something non-linear for the blending modes if you want in fact i believe i used a either a cubic or a cubic in out. And the reason why is because it's a little less dramatic uh, than the quadratic in outs uh, or the exponential ones. Uh, these really have special use cases, uh, these more dramatic ones. So most in most cases, you're probably going to be using something a little less dramatic, like a Hermite uh, cubic in out, uh, cubic in out, cubic quadratic in out. Uh, sinusoidal and out or linear uh, so anyway it's up to you if you want I, I might play around with this but we'll revisit this whenever we actually have this set up properly so that's it for that one and I'll go ahead and delete this one and then actually I'm going to go ahead and delete these two as well since this has a bug and I'm just going to manually make these and set them up. And so on this one, we don't actually need anything fancy. We don't, we don't need motion warping on this, <clears throat> but we can 
uh, also add this to the locomotion sync group. <clears throat> now, in order for this sync group to actually uh, be useful in comparison in relation to the animation graph, then we actually need it to be on the animation blueprint. So, <clears throat> one second. All right, so I'm back. Um, all right, so we set up this locomotion uh, sync group right here, but we never uh, set it up on the animation blueprint. So under the animations folder, you'll see the ABP Manny. Open that up and then come over here to the My Blueprints tab and go to the Anim Graph by double clicking on it. Open up the locomotion and then go to the Walk Run. And right here on this blend space uh, player, we're going to set the method to sync group and always a leader. And we're going to uh, set that to locomotion there. And then I'm just making sure that these are named the same. Like I said, I don't know if, if this actually works with uh, between animontages and uh, sequences on the animation graph, but we can go ahead and set it up like that anyway. I don't think they, I don't think it does work like that. I'll, I'll look into it and uh, get back to you guys on that, but let's see. So that's pretty much it. I, we'll go ahead and do the uh, animation montage for the bench loop. And there's really nothing we have to do on this but drag that into there. Uh, and we'll, we'll set this to looping right here. That might actually be important that we set this to looping. And we don't need to add this to a sync group because it's not going to be blending out it into a locomotion. And it has no sync markers anyway, so. And that's pretty much it. We can adjust that other stuff if we need to, but in the next video, we'll set up the AI controller and the st state tree for the AI, and then we will set up the smart object.